about to fight y'all. Two fellas hop in the pickup and travel the country hunting white-tailed deer. This is Buck Truck. Overpressured, scarce little deer. There's something about hunting in the South for us that just feels right. You set your expectations and then just go hit the woods. The Jones side of my family is from Arkansas and as a young man from Texas who was crazy about waterfowl, many of my dreams were from the state just north of us. Oh, oh there goes the other bolt. Oh, this is not good. Not good, everyone. We may have to go without, huh? We're getting pretty close though. If you're a DPS, we're sorry. <laughs> Not that sorry though. No. <laughs> we're headed up to meet our brother Clay Newcomb in what he calls the creation state and to fight nasty late season conditions in an attempt to top off freezers for the winter. Yeah, yeah, getting Tyler some waterfowl around, and all of a sudden he's a new guy. 9.3 miles, and it would look as if, unless things change, it's the status quo. The buck boat will make it to the destination. That's, That's good. good news. The berries things, never got hot. Things finna turn into a duck boat if you ain't careful. A duck boat, buck boat. <laughs> all kinds of boats, man. Uh, many, many waterfowl are around. Muck boat out there. That much rain we've been having. Yeah. Dude, I don't know if I believe these river gauges or how they work or whatever, but the idea would be to have enough water to run the boat and chase deer around, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we ain't throwing deer in the boat, we're doing something wrong, I think. This stuff is very specialized, you know what I mean? It's a bunch of floodplain, lowland stuff. I think that you get so many different hypotheses as to how to find deer when you have these like monotonous habitat types where guys have got to give these theories otherwise if we don't have you know these really high level theories then we're probably not figuring anything out because it's just deer walking around in the woods at that point you you've hunted I mean? this stuff what's your yeah. what's your go-to right now i don't really have any spots right now i think we're going to hunt a different area what you get is like a you know six inch plus rise that they call a ridge, most guys would laugh, right? That is what keeps certain trees' feet from getting too wet. And so those trees that will grow in that area are lots of oaks a lot of times. So you might be able to find a few different types of oaks that are still uh, putting off. Uh, also that, that higher uh, ridge system or whatever that you may be hunting is going to give greenbrier and other little things a chance to grow whereas in stuff that floods for six months out of the year there's nothing there's no real like understory if you know what I mean so I think you get a couple of things with a ridge you get oaks uh, and you get more cover being a guy who had not hunted here I'm gonna probably be trying to cover country mm -hmm. at least today as a scouting day and try to figure out like what the point is of what they're doing yeah and it's also late season so what you got is you're going to have to get deep, probably. I yeah. think that's going to be a key. You talking about the brick one or this one? No, I'm telling him to get it. Earlier this summer, our friend Scott offered us a place to stay at his hunting camp. We don't turn down free beds. <laughs> I actually sold mine, man. I created some habit on that. Yes. <laughs> whatever, you know, whatever gets you there is really all that matters. Well, I hope it gets us back is what I'm concerned about. <laughs> you know, yeah. There's an old adage that you don't ever really go down river. But as I start saying, that was, that's, what we, that's what we say all the time. We always went, we always went up river. Yeah. So, yeah. Just in case. You know, I hate to say that there's not necessary. I mean, there's a few things that, that, that you'll pick out that will be helpful, and we'll talk about some of that as we go. But, you know, some of it's just plain, just regular deer hunting, yeah. you know, strategy. Figuring it out. Yeah, just yeah. This, this. I mean, y'all are, are 
y'all do this. I mean, this is this is going to be no trouble, you know. So I hope. Oh, oh, oh it won't. I had, I had trouble last year. <laughs> it, was, it was 80 degrees the whole yeah. time, you know. So hopefully we'll get a little bit better weather. A lot of Providence involved in what we do too. <laughs> it's yeah. much about what we can do. Awesome, man. It's impressive. I will tell you this though. Most of the, most of the mistakes most people make is they don't go far enough. That evening, Scott showed us around on the public land that he grew up on. I'm not sure if we were scouting deer or playing in the mud, but we were having fun. So here's the funny thing. Everybody's waiting for me to fall, see? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> what do they see different about my gymnast body? We walked all over the place, pretty much just admiring wood ducks, and then made it back to camp after dark, just in time to fluff Clay's pillow before he showed up and ate all the enchiladas. Hello, sir. Hey, Z, how are you doing, man? Good, good to see Thanks you. Thanks for coming down to drink. Oh, actually, actually sounds well enough. That's a surprise. Oh, you know what? I think I've got it. I think my dad has a strap in the back of that. quick about how to navigate this country. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what I just didn't know. I mean, can you cross stuff like this? Ah, Gary, this is my hope. I hadn't borrowed a side-by-side -side from my dad in maybe ever. And I borrow it and I hadn't driven it 20 minutes and I think we burned the transmission up. Sorry, Dad. Real sorry. Let's see what she does. It's smoke. It's smoke, dude. No, I'm, I'm serious. I, I didn't, I really didn't crank on it very hard just because I just knew. You're either just driving on like wide open woods, but then you have to cross these little bayous, you know. Well, okay, well it drained. I mean, is it gonna be a lot or a little? All right, well, good. Well, that's good news. Let me, let me see what happens. Well, good news is <laughs> I didn't burn the transmission out. Just the clutch got full of water. So Gary Newcomb's happy. We drained the clutch out, clutch housing out. So, but when we come back through that mud hole, we're gonna have to, it's gonna be, you know, serious. I was gonna walk until we found some deer sign, or bumped a deer, and we hadn't went 100 yards from where I stopped. Bumped a doe and a nice buck. I mean, just a racked, you know, 15, 16 inch wide. A deer that I would shoot in a flash. I 
guess it's thick enough. and two bucks. We just bumped. Saw another buck right there. I can't figure out why we need to go any further. Yeah. Can you believe that? I mean, we found the deer. I don't see any reason to. But now we gotta figure out what we're gonna do in here. Right. That was an eventful morning for Clay, but not so much for Tyler and I. I'm telling you, it feels like all we did the first couple of days was fix stuff. Weird reverse well, my wiring happens. Yeah. I've got a shirt that says that. Do you? That's cool. I'd take one of those if you got if you're gonna mass produce them. Right blinker. It's the right it's, it's inverted. It's those inverted. Are inverted. So we need to swap yellow and green. Yeah. Button brush, buck brush, whatever they call now, it. There'll it's, be water in that, won't there? Depending. More than likely. There'll be water there for sure. But this will be like Those. ankle deep. That's kind of what I've been mm -hmm. seeing. Mm -hmm. But there's water there. There probably is a land bridge there. Mm -hmm. And there'll be deer using that. Okay, let's put the boat in. Sound good? Man, it is, is nice mine? to have you around uh, with us. <laughs> I'm not good for much, but. <laughs> source jacket is this. So there, I don't mind walking that. Right there, seven or three quarters. And there's this one here that's gonna be like a half. Five. Where do you want to go, Tyler? Wherever y'all are going. Oh, stop. You pick the one you want to go to. Well, I, I'm not sure until I get there, but uh, <laughs> I would say that I would feel real good, go, good going to that spot right you there. You go to that spot. Okay. Somebody needs to go there, and somebody needs to go there or there. I do need to mark the boat. Yeah, I could call. Me too. This is a good piece. I know, I like it. I like it. Kill a big one, Brad. Yeah. Get him. This is gonna for real go right where we're going. This is bad, y'all. That four-wheeler trail is headed straight where I'm going, and the only direction I can go is toward KC. I decide to burn a quick mile, potentially running into him and putting our heads together again. same direction we're trying to go. Where do you want to go? I don't care. Um, I, 
Where's Clay going? Do you know? He's gonna go to this one most likely. Okay, that's what I figured. Let's just get to where we can make an assumption on it. Okay. Cross this Found. We've been walking since we left. Yeah, that's why I picked it. <laughs> this is where you told me to go. No, this is the middle one. This is the one. Yeah, we're all three. This is the one that. <laughs> I'm so sorry, dude. It's okay. I've set up for the coach's box. Wherever you are gonna be down there by that. Right there. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Okay, sure listen. The blue dot is where you are. Well, listen, right. here's what happened. I went there and it was, it, it's full of water. Uh -huh. It's crazy. And, and I saw it's that. It's crazy how swamps are that way. <laughs> and I just came up here and I thought I was so far from you, it wouldn't even matter. I didn't know, I didn't have your pin. They board. already came to mess me up, so you didn't do yeah. anything. I I can't, I'm so, we're Clay. all three about to chase bucks around. Yeah, I looked over and I see Clay coming through the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to fight y'all, because y'all were in my spot. Yeah. And then it turns out I'm in your spot. This is a good spot. It's bad right over there, but yeah. it's really good. But I'm not kidding. You. We were about to sit up by that log and hunt off the ground the rest of the evening. You would have killed two bucks. Two bucks. <laughs> well, after that impromptu meeting of the minds, we decided to spread out through the woods and make the most of this evening. And we saw the least that you possibly could: zero deer. Yeah. Does that work? So you, are 
Are you good with that? Oh, yeah. Okay.
set up here. I mean, can't refute what's going on. Cracking into this really early. It's like not even eight o'clock. Hungry. continue. I just shot this tree with the rangefinder from where that deer turned out, you can see the big leaf turn out right there on the ground. The tree is at 37. Right here is three to four yards past the tree. It's 41 yards. Put my 30 on his heart, no string jump, no dead deer. It's just the way it goes sometimes. Taking it slow, looking. I see a buck just nose down to the ground. Like, you know, hit the ground. Hit the can call like once or twice. Knock an arrow. And when I hit the can call, he started coming. And I could see him after I knocked the arrow. So he's coming right at us, dude. Comes towards us for a second and then breaks off and starts going downwind. And the last hole that I had to shoot him in, I ranged a tree at 25 and I guessed him about 10 yards further. And he went behind a tree. I drew, grunted when he came out. And I thought, pins and needles, he's gonna jump string. So I put 30 on his heart thinking it was 35, 36, and shot and went way low. Never jumped the string, just, and he was at 41. So I missed him. Takes off, blows, hit the can call again to see if he'll come back. That bigger deer comes in, and by the time I see him, he's probably at like 50, going to get my wind even further towards my wind than that deer was. He got into our wind, and I kept can calling him, he wanted to come so bad, dude. And he was like, like for sure four-year-old deer. I mean, like big chest, big neck. And he was like full, like he wanted the can call bad. Did she walk around slow can call the honey ones? On a windy day like this, maybe. We spooked the dough while we are hanging sticks. Getting late in the hunt at this point, and it's taken a lot of intention to stay optimistic. I was wanting to go on past that area, but definitely in that pinch, basically. We head in for a warm lunch and quickly get back in the water and rain. It's getting colder. And singing songs from Texas to keep us warm. And creating useless games to take our mind off the dreary weather and lackluster hunt. Thank you for it. 
can't see in here. Sure knows we're here, right? Yeah, like he has to. He has to. I had told the guys I almost shot a boar, but I hadn't specified what species yet. This is a celebration of not seeing or killing a deer. That's right. In an entire week. Thank you very and much. And it's Kay Casey's it. birthday. Y'all yep. have a great night. All right, you too. Thanks. Happy birthday, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're 35 yards from him on the ground. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's cool. Dude. Yeah. Y'all been tricking us this whole time. Yeah. We did. For this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought it was the butt of a of a of a pig. We walked up, we're 50 yards away, and I was about to shoot it. Oh, I saw it, and goodness. I was like, that's a pig. And then I got to looking and I saw those ears and like those are like You want to talk ears. about a good episode if you shot that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could have done a whole warden series. That's right. Outlaw. <laughs> now, what also is cool is that that is a real Arkansas bear. The bears in western Arkansas were reintroduced. Mm -hmm. Like they killed them out from everywhere. The only place they couldn't kill them out was here. Yeah, because it's inaccessible. Yeah, so because, this of, bear because is... it was before levees and stuff. Sure, yeah. And so it was just like this was just a, like the Amazon rainforest down here. Yeah. Cool. That thing in my mind was a pig for sure. They rut That's in like good. April, May. Yeah, they have a real, it's the, the breeding cycle of bears is really wild because they 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 have these long breeding windows not like a not like a deer mm -hmm. and they have long breeding windows because they're a low density animal so they may not run up against another bear for a long time mm -hmm. so they have these big huge windows of breeding but, but she the, still ha go ahead but sorry. the way that they compensate for it is what they call delayed implantation so the really? egg gets fertilized in mm -hmm. june may june july whenever mm -hmm. but this fertilized egg stays in her uterus or, or doesn't implant onto the uterine wall until november the first or you know right yeah. around once her body has determined if she can rear cubs isn't that wild? Based so if she has a diet and based off the fall, the hard mass of the fall, and if she's real fat, she may have three cubs. But then they give birth in the in the winter den. She doesn't truly days. hibernate, right? Black bears don't truly hibernate. Hibernate. Man, out here. I've heard the top guys in the country use the word hibernate, mm -hmm. but also heard the other top guys in the country say that they technically don't hi hi hibernate; they estivate. Which is just basically a word, a semantics word. True hibernation is like what a groundhog would do, and the way I've heard it described is a groundhog. If you dug him up in the winter time, you could like pick him up and like shake him, and he wouldn't wake up. Mm -hmm. Like deep, deep sleep, mm -hmm. heart rate down, metabolism down. A bear doesn't really do that. Mm -hmm. They have a 60-day gestation period, so a bear is born hairless in the den, and those cubs develop and are fully awake and their back legs don't engage until they're around like two months old, three months old, I can't remember, it, it, in April. Mm -hmm. And that's so they can't crawl out of the den while mom's asleep. Mm -hmm. Literally, if you had a little, these little bear cubs that you see guys, we go on den studies and, mm -hmm. and uh, if you put one of those little cubs on the ground, he'd crawl with his front legs and his back legs would just like totally not be engaged. 
And it's so that when their mom's conked out, the little cubs aren't just like running outside and getting eaten. <laughs> it's cool. But then all of a sudden they they lock in and they can use their back legs. Mm. Good job on keeping a secret. Thanks, man. That was a that was a yeah. well played that ruse. Was, yeah. It's all too large right here. Do you think that's mine? Stuff for being in the background, you know. I'm gonna grab my boat, my pack, and I will meet you in the boat at some yeah. point. I'll be sleeping in the boat. 11:30. The three amigos decide to head three different directions. Clay on his machine. I decide to head back to the boat, and Tyler decides to hoof it with the intention of rendezvousing with me later in the day. I made it across. One of the few obstacles that we're going to encounter. We still have a mile, well, nine tenths to go or so.
I didn't know for sure if they'd come this way, but man, like, it just feels good to make a plan and for it to work and, to, and for the dose to be on a transition line and then kick back in here on a west wind and give us a shot. <laughs> I know it's the buck truck, but I am juiced about a doe right now. <laughs> Oh my goodness, five minutes later had a 150 at 10 yards chasing a doe. Oh, gosh. Oh. He, he has just been a magnet for the deer this week, man. Yes. I just got a message from Tyler. This is our last day, and we've struggled, man, seeing deer. And he went into a spot that he wanted to go to the first day. And he, just we just didn't go there he didn't go there went in there this morning on the ground killed a doe which is like a major win for us after a week of public land hunting nothing then he said he had a, a big one at 10 yards that winded him he said it was a stud 150 plus so finally on last day the last day we we killed one so good job tyler I don't know if we have footage of it, but there was a monster buck right behind us here, like 10 yards from me. I stared it down through a gap and it winded us and it was with the doe. But legit, I shot a deer last year. That was probably the biggest deer I've ever shot, score wise, mass wise, everything. And the deer reminded me of that deer, huge, huge buck. Let's pick the rest of this stuff up and go find this deer. as red as an arrow gets. Oh, there she is right there. She went like 30 yards max. Fried back straps tonight. But it's gonna be a little work getting her out of here. reason that I haven't gutted her yet it's because of that I just went through get mud all up in the meat and stuff so I'm gonna gut her down there where the ba where the boat's gonna pick us up skin for a smaller deer. <laughs> Thanks for picking me up, dude. Sure. Look at you. Now it's me. The shot was like 32, and she probably ran less than that. That's as quick as an animal can die, mm -hmm. pretty much. You know what I mean? I would imagine that when you put a really good shot on an animal, it makes them a little tastier. Yeah. 
If you'd have told me when I was 16 that I could hop in my truck, drive a few hours, walk around in miles of swampland, shoot a doe with my bow, and drag it out so my buddy could pick me up in a boat, I would hardly believe you. The self-sufficiency in that task would place a lot of doubt in my mind, but nevertheless, I would tell myself, you have to try this sometime. Here's the kicker. I actually had a lot of help. Foundations were built by my dad and my brothers Clay, Scott, and KC encourage. Y'all do this. I mean, this is, this is gonna be no trouble. Challenge. I was about to fight y'all. And selflessly share opportunities among the countless of the things they add to me on a hunt like this. You know, the older I get, the more I become my dad. I'm sure he's felt the same. It's a good thing. I hope my son feels the same way. It's convicting and makes me grateful for the men I've been surrounded with. <laughs>